Welcome to Guildcast episode. Wow, it's 50. Broham, did you realize it's 50? Holy yeah. crap, it's episode 50 yeah, yeah. for November 21st, 2012. We're watching Game Ready. Today we got Lost Shores. It's time to dissect the Lost Shores. Ton of class changes to talk about and a worrying quote from ArenaNet. All that more. But first, Scott Hawks, Flicks with Claire, Rich Procopio. I'm thinking about, um, I'll, t I'll do it live. I'm thinking about killing all of the intros at the beginning of the show. It, everybody knows us, they watch every week. Like, we don't even need to go through it. I'm just going to start the show. Screw everybody. It's not, it's not the Stan Lee way of doing things, is it? It's not. It's really not. <laughs> no, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but let's kick it off. Lost Shores event is coming gone. First of all, did everyone partake? Because if not, you're fired from the show. And uh, here are your papers. <laughs> Good night. We had papers? See ya. We don't have papers. There, papers? Yeah, I like, I like papers. Scott, even I, even I did the final event. Even I, even I, I did the whole the, thing I, I, for like I three hours. I smashed I on the final event. these little I did crab rest of it, guys. To the, final. <laughs> <laughs> the face hook is like from aliens. That's right. Yeah. All right, so it kicked off on Friday. Uh, it did start off on time, right? If memory serves correct. Noon yes. Pacific. Mm -hmm. Did yes. they get all right? So the first part of the event. Uh, was the Karka emerging for the first time ever? The lighthouse and lion's arch was being destroyed. Uh, this this portion of it I did miss. Big, 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 big fight. Scott, since you, since you missed the end, you're not going to talk that whole big, section. I'll just uh, big, I'll let you start. Big fight. Yeah, lots of Karka jumping out of the water, coming on land. Go, oh look! And a nice little cutscene with them emerging, and then you fighting loads of the veteran ones, and they had tons of health, and um, so basically. Uh, learn how to avoid their role and all that, and then lots and lots of fighting, lots more fighting, and lots more hit points, a, uh, lots of hit points, lots of hit points. If you yeah, like we'll hit talk points, about it was a festival. Um, so, and then there was an event, and you had to, you were supposed to. Uh... Derpity derp, look at derp, <laughs> derp <laughs> face and derp. Sorry, you're back. Go ahead. That, that was that was kind of like how the first part was. You derped a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Excellent illustration there. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that. Arena Net's uh, idea of like boss fights are just lots of hit points. Oh, it's, it's not that interesting. 10x the hit points. Let people beat on it for eight hours. There you go. We'll talk about that. Um, so lots of hit points. Um, what did you guys think? How, how did it go overall? Though? What did you guys think of the, the first part of the event? Like I said, I missed it. So clue me in. Was it, was it a fun event? Was it... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. It was funny. If you like, if you like PowerPoint slides of shellfish. Ooh, it, performance it issues. On. Did everybody have performance issues? Frame rate issues? Yeah. I didn't have frame rate issues. I had input lag. Like, my, yeah. I actually have video of it. It's actually pretty smooth when you watch it back, but I hit my buttons. They were doing nothing. And so it was, it was kind of frustrating. It looked really cool. You really wanted to take part. It was your first try time fighting the Karka. And uh, yeah, it was, it, there was a lot of performance issues across the board. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any lag on my side. Like I, I had wonderful FPS and like, it was actually really gorgeous in the screenshots I took. But the problem was, you know, you get off one skill in 10. And when you're being hit with some of the hardest creatures in the game, um, it was not a super fun success. Why do you, why do you guys think this is? Was it was there was there a bug or was it something that the, all the fighting was pretty much happening in one spot and just completely overloading? Um, if you're gonna do a refer a friend weekend, <laughs> guess when's the best time to do it? When perhaps you do an event that's on a short uh, span with um, lots of people who are returning for that too. And um, the, perhaps not being completely tested and stress tested before. Yeah, it just it felt it felt like there was too many people per um, overflow server. Right. Uh, if they split it into more overflow servers, it might have been better. Uh, it, it just it was a lot of people in the exact same spot, and so I, I think it was it was a little rough. It was a little rough. 
So it didn't, this doesn't necessarily seem like it was a problem with tech. It was just a matter of overload, pretty much. Um, how about the second event? That uh, kicked off in Lion's Arch as well. Um, I, I don't think that was quite on time for everyone. Not quite, no. Not, Depending not quite. on where well, you were. I, I well, heard there was a bit of confusion on this one. The trebuchet yeah. started on time, but it was a trebuchet that took about 45 minutes to build on our mm. server. Yes. No, that's it. It depended where you were, because like, yeah. on the server I was originally on, the trebuchet was built on time, like 3 o'clock, I think it was. It was up and ready and ready to go. And from 2.30 Eastern, they'd been building it. And then I went over to join Elizabeth, and I get there, and there's this like lump of bricks on the floor. I'm like, oh, this is the same <laughs> as where I just came from. And then around, was it, how long did it take? Was it like 45 it, minutes? 45 it was minutes. legit 45 like, minutes before we actually got on boats. So nothing yeah, was happening, no, just a lot of standing around? A lot yeah, of standing and, around. And, it was, and like you said, it was very confusing because people were, you know, talking to each other in-game, talking to each other on Twitter, like, oh, mine started, mine hasn't. Everyone was like panic. It was like this half panic. Did I miss it? Should I stay here? What do I do? It was crazy. And then and you'd then, have a couple overflows where people were trying to, like, just have fun around it. So they're, like, casting skills or jumping up on the trebuchet and then glitching it. <laughs> so it stopped building. And then I guess what would happen after that was what? It's like about 30 minutes into it, but people didn't really know what it was happening. That whether the trebuchet was it, am I right? That with the event happening or not happening, there was it opened up to the boat to get to the lost shores, but but no one really even knew yeah. it was there at first. And people were confused to so like people were leaving the area, just going about their way. Some people were hanging around and there was like mass confusion. My my favorite yeah. one was in the Grand Piazza where people started shouting, the two the two NPCs are talking to each other. It started. And then the t it was, um, is it Magnus and uh, I the name, the Inspector? There you go. And, uh, and so they're next to each other. So I went running over to see what was going on. And then I turned and there was two of the same NPC standing in the nearby area like, <laughs> this like what? is wrong. And then everybody went, uh, they just tweeted that uh, you need to be over in that area and that's where you need to stand and what will happen. So everybody ran back over to the same spot and waited for what a boat was, to appear. What was the uh, what was the point of the trebuchet if it would have would have worked? Did anybody does anybody know? Like what were we what, what were you supposed to do with it? <laughs> I assume it was just a fortification built in the city to keep um to fend off any further Karka attacks. Um but yeah it, it wasn't was, like an integral part of us going. No, it, it, it like it, it was the events version of a uh, of a uh, sand timer, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it was. It basically. Oh look, there's just a few bricks on the floor. That means we've got lots of time to wait until this whole thing kicks off. Yeah, and they they opened up that ship, right? And like half the people on my overflow server just left. They took the ship. They're like, all right, we're gonna start, you know, doing the new zone. And I stayed and I stuck around. And, and eventually, the event in Lion's Arch kicked off. And the Karka came back, and now you have these new, like, solvent weapons that you could use mm -hmm. against them. The problem is there was only, like, ten of us, and we got slaughtered by these over and over again. Mm -hmm. We had trouble pushing it back, because everyone went to the island. So, yeah, overall, it was just very it was confusing, and, uh, you know, it, it, it was a little bit of a letdown. What do you think would help the confusion on some of this? Do you think that you have, like, more in-game messaging, like, need to be a little bit more, like, with pop-ups and stuff to kind of... Tell us what the heck is going on. I mean, I gotta say, like, like Rift, Rift does it constantly. Like, Rift will constantly like pop things up in your face, like bling. And there's a sound effect, and you're like, oh, okay. And it kind of like, maybe they need to just get a little bit more on the horn there. I think what they need to do is make use of that fabulous quest sidebar they have, because so effectively they're trying to communicate with players through oh, yeah, lines of messaging yeah. and the mail system, which is not my favorite idea they've ever had. Um, so Ooh. just use a quest bar put it up on the quest log side of things, and you have a way of talking to players wherever they are in the world and updating it pretty much as soon as you want, wow, um, as opposed to yeah. bizarre mail had, systems. Yeah. If only they had this dynamic event system that told if you where only. to go and what to do, <laughs> that would have worked great. They must implement that in the game yeah. soon. They, they also they also used in the betas. Remember, they used to just have a pop up that could just go right into your screen that just said like they would say something like the beta uh, finale is about to start in Divinity's Reach. And I know that's a little bit immersion breaking, but they can put it in a way where it does, they can broadcast to everyone's screen. They can say, "Hey, everybody, it's going to kick off in Lion's Arch. Hang out there. Go into this section or something like that." I don't know. It, it's better than everybody like not knowing. All right, so you don't broadcast. Um, you don't have broadcast citizens. Citizens. <laughs> <Yeah>. Citizens. <laughs> 
Citizens. Citizens. All right, so you finally got to the island, though. Things got sorted out. I mean, most people eventually figured out what was going on. You got to the island. Um, pretty much gorgeous island. I mean, I don't think like, the design of it's pretty awesome. Like a lot of little like Beautiful. nooks and crannies and things in like that back area with the. Do you guys see that jumping thing that was behind like the spawning area? That one area. Well, I I, I didn't get to do that with the, with the rocks. I tried like four stepping times. Stepping stones. And, yeah, I tried that like four times, and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. We, yeah. we uh, Elizabeth and I went straight there, and Elizabeth jumped on it and scampered across. And we took a few attempts. <laughs> and then Elizabeth did it within ten minutes of it going live, basically. And I did it. I got quite close in there. I wasn't far away. You did very well. I did quite well, and then um, and then I went, look at this. And then you so, what? <laughs> it was like Elizabeth had done it. I'm like, all right, some one of us has done it. That's fine. And, <laughs> <"Good enough." laughs> Elizabeth, like. Queen of the jumping puzzles. Um, all right, so what do we got? We got Karka as enemies. What did you think? It wasn't risen. A little bit disappointed. We got Karka. No, it, it gave me a newfound appreciation for risen. To be fair, that, that's by the end of Sunday. I was happy to go go back to Or and fight risen. <laughs> killed a lot of Karka over the weekend. I'm sure I only did yes. Sunday's event, and I feel like I just like nonstop killed Karka. Um, yeah, they didn't drop so, any bloody shells though, did they? Oh my god, the drop rate was so low. Um, <laughs> so Sunday comes along. Uh, did it start on time? I jumped in probably about half hour after it started. Forty right on time. Yeah, it did. Okay, so that was good. Um, lots of Karka. Lots of Karka. Um, lots and lots of... So here... Uh, all right, so uh, the entire server is in one spot. I didn't have any performance issues, though, at this point. Did you guys have any... So everything was working fine for me. Yeah. Doing the whole run around. Well. So you had to basically run around that, that, that beachy area there and go from sort of like area to area and follow that little uh, researcher, inspector person. Did you guys do mm -hmm. all that part? And the line guard and all that, yeah. Um, You do that a lot. You do that a lot, a whole lot. When yeah. it worked, <laughs> I was working for me. It was just that you were just. It, it just seemed like it, it, it. That's where it started breaking down. Like I started doing that whole sequence for like I don't know, fifteen, twenty minutes, and then it was like maybe a half an hour, and it was like, wow, we're still doing this. We're still beating on Karka, and we've got this baby ones, and then we've got the bigger ones, and then we've got the real bigger ones, and oh, they're gonna roll, and oh, I'm dead, and oh, somebody will riz me and get me up, and then we'll do this all over again for the next half hour. Um. Yeah. And then, after all right. Touring, so then, I, go ahead. So, so after touring the island, it was like, right, they're going to do this move now. So I know to put to do my dodge for the first attack. So I do a range attack. Then just before they're going to die, they'll do the range again. So I'll dodge again. Then win next one. 125 of those later. Fun. I mean, they did some really cool stuff. Like when you when you got up to the camp after you did the beach part, and you got up to the camp, and then you you, you know you killed a couple of kark in the camp, and then they opened up the camp, and then they went down. They started cutting down trees and like paving the way for it. And then more karka showed up, and more karka showed up, and more karka showed up. Um, some of the stuff around it was cool, but at that point, I was already like, "How long were you guys into this? You're already like an hour into doing so this, and you've basically killed the same mob except with you know two different variations of the same thing." What you're describing with setting up camps and cutting down trees wasn't actually part of the finale. Yeah, we're doing this. This is the uh, he's talking okay, about making, making sure we're on the same page here. What do you, well, it gets, it gets, but it gets to that point, doesn't it? Because I did this whole lead up thing. Like this is all this is all this is all like came before it. And That's then all I got part of settling the island. Yeah, but it wasn't actually a part of the finale itself. Was that the actually was, was was that from part two? Right. Yeah, that was. That oh, was, um, okay. So then I then I actually did part two. I just did it a day late. Oh, did I did it all yeah. in one shot? <laughs> I didn't realize. That. I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't know I did all of that. Okay, so then then maybe that's why it also fell a little bit long to me. So wait, so where does the finale actually start for people who did it the day before? Uh, the finale started from um, the point of interest uh, Canox camp, and uh, you went out and escorted Lion Guard as they were planting explosives in the hive. You went up and, and down the hive planting explosive. You left, and then you started driving the ancient Karka towards the hive to kill it there that okay was so all, so all the other stuff of uh following the troops out letting them help them uh fend off the karka to rebuild the bridge and all that stuff to get to over where the ancient karka was that was all part two yes yeah that's all the settling the island DEs. yeah and, gotcha. and i kind of like to self I, don't do part two and part three together because it was mind-numbing <laughs> at, really at, at that point i was just like oh my god like there's 
it, it, that's where it was Make becoming it so end. monotonous for me. I was like, can we get a different boss mechanic? Can I get a different mob? Can I get something, please? Like, Anything. please. Right. Yeah. The actual settling of the island was kind of interesting because it's like, it, again, it goes into that. They didn't just give you, here's a new zone. They, you actually settle the zone and, you know, and you actually kind of, you know, you pay, help pave the roads and like you said, build the bridges and stuff. And, that, and those are things that are kind of like staying as part of that map now. So it's kind of, you know, while I agree with you, it is kind of killing the same thing over and over again. And, you know, it wasn't, you know, you know, it was a little boring in four parts, but I, I like the overall feel of, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're actually doing something. We just discovered this island. We are pioneering this uh, this new land that we're going to explore. So that was kind of cool. Well, that's something, Richie, you and I even talked about that. And it was funny because I, I, I have some issues with the event and it was the, the monotony of the event. But at the same time, I do have to admit that I did have fun. And you kind of wrote the same thing in your article about it is that. There, I think the reason that it actually ended up being fun, though, is it was a large group of people. It was kind of like a big Zerg, which are always fun. Like, who doesn't love just a huge group of people? But then nobody really knew what they were doing, which is also fun because everybody's just like typing in chat. Going like, I don't know what to do. What do we do? What do we do? And it's like kind of mass confusion. And that, that's kind of a good time. But yeah. All right. So picking it up, then I see I don't even know where the events start and stop then. I just did the entire thing all the way through because then we got to the point where, you know, you get to that that area where you got to keep the Karka within this the 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 area before the waterfall mm -hmm. um right outside of the waterfall is that part two as well with a, like took, the mist the mist I curtain over, coming down i went over a bridge and then we had to fight there was like a bunch of carca with an ancient carca and you had to kill all the ads and the we ancient carca was part of the finale finale we that's finale. Yeah. the reinforcements yes the, the reinforcements were just like non-stop like it was too much and it was that just bar like moved so slowly oh so my God. slowly and it's oh, funny man. i i i i recorded the whole thing for two and a half hours and we had the first reinforcements phase right and it just took forever and, and i have myself like you know saying on the microphone just like oh man that was rough and then after that finished i would i was saying into the microphone like please not another reinforcement phase don't do that and there was a rock slide and i was all happy and then another reinforcement phase which ended with two champion car uh, karka and i was like oh, i can't take this anymore it took so long to kill those guys it was like 15 minutes per champion parka and every time the things did the barrel roll 35 people couldn't learn from an hour and a half before to <laughs> no, get out yeah. of that thing no idea they they no idea it. but but were some of them having issues with lag as well so basically yeah. they Probably. they were sitting there and then the next thing they knew they were a smear on the floor because the loads of the barrel <laughs> yeah. rolled over them and they hadn't even saw them Seen them. And I think another problem that, that was happening was you had to keep them at that one area. You had to keep them within um, the radius to actually kill them. You couldn't kill them outside of the radius, so you'd have to do it all over again. You know, I couldn't actually see the radius. I didn't see anything, so I kept seeing people yell in chat. So I was just like, "All right, I guess I'll just go stand over there with those jerks because that's where they're mostly like you know all grouped up. So at least maybe I'm in the sphere, but I couldn't even see the sphere." Uh, this is this is probably one of the first times I'm actually gonna give like Arena Net some crap and say like, you know what? They don't really know how to design like boss mechanics. Because then you get to the you get to the ancient you know the ancient guy and you get into the hive area and it's like, all right, let's climb, let's chase him up to the top. Here we go, and we're gonna kill those little lads and they're really annoying and they slow me, but I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get slowed like eight times, but I'll get there. And then you get to the top and it's, oh crap, he goes to the bottom. Okay, let's go down to the bottom. Now we go to the like really like we, that's it. That's all you can do is waste time by bringing me up to the top, bring me to the bottom. I don't know. And then you kill him. It was it, there was nothing that. I had like I had fun because of the people and the chaos of the whole entire event. They don't know how to do boss fights. They don't. They don't. There's uh, no mechanics. There's no phases. There's no. There's nothing. I'd like. I'd like to. I'd like to argue with you on that point, but it's difficult to after you've run several <laughs> <of the> dungeons. <laughs> because, and it's not all the same. I, after we're going to talk about that a bit more later, but um, the, there are some that work, but there are quite a few boss fights where you like. Am I still hitting this boss? Yeah. I'm Ten minutes in. Well, that's what I was yeah. joking about before about hit points. It's like their idea of a of a finale like boss, you know. And you could call them a boss mob. You could say it's not supposed to be a boss mob. Whatever. Uh, the bottom line is, if I'm killing the end finale boss of of a big event like this, I want it to be fun, and I would I would expect to be some phases. Here's my theory, Elizabeth. What do you think about this? I'm almost wondering if they're afraid to add all kinds of phases and stuff in that pertain to certain classes because we don't have the holy trinity. That's entirely possible, um, but I feel that the fact that they've designed interesting and um, essentially phased um, boss fights previously would suggest that that's 
something that they can do if they really apply themselves. Not to say that they're not applying themselves. Yeah. That sounded mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, what, what I'll say about the finale, we, we'll stick just to the finale now and, and we'll talk about other bosses later. Um, I, I think the whole thing was way too long. I think it needed to be about an hour. And I do think there were some interesting things in there. I like when you have to knock the tree down to make him scurry toward the thing. I like the, the volcanic you know, gas pockets. I like the rock slide. You know, you can throw a couple ads in, but the, the whole you know, multiple ad phases was, was, was really drawn out. And I agree going up the hive and down the hive was, you know, was a little bit pointless. And the most disappointing part is when you finally are just standing there, you know, the, the carca, the ancient carca has been wounded by all the explosions and you finally are standing there beating on them. There wasn't anything really interesting about that part. It was just stand around in a circle and, and beat on them. And then of course you got to jump on the lava and everything like that. that. That part was kind of fun, but you know, I wish there was something more to that, that very, very final phase. So I think if they actually condense it down to about an hour or so, I'd feel, I'd feel pretty good about the event overall. Um, I don't think any of you have played the Ara, Ara story mode. Um, it's something that I really enjoyed, which a lot of people haven't. And in the same way, I really enjoyed this because um, I really like being put in a certain mindset, and I definitely felt, for better or worse, um, like it was a long slog into the island and I was battling you know, kind of the inhabiting force. Um, and like Gary said, you know, I enjoyed it because of the chaos and because of the people and the fact that I was with like 80 billion people and I was running in a group and all that. So I enjoyed the social experience of it probably the most. But even if I don't necessarily think it's the way that the entire game should be or anything but very select elements of the game should be, I, I actually did enjoy kind of the, oh my gosh, like there's another wave sort of thing um, a bit. I'm not saying it's a gem of game design but I did appreciate it. Um, yeah, like I said, at the end of the day, I look back on it and I probably would say that, yeah, I did have fun. I think it, it was, I don't even know if I'd say it was, you could say it was too long. I would say, I, I, I wouldn't mind an event being that long. It's supposed to be a big world event, right? Like, so lasting a few hours to me could be cool, but it needed more variety. If there was more things yeah, it, to break up that, those two, three hours, then it wouldn't have been like, oh, this is just the entire event. Like I said, everything just felt like more waves of ads with hit points, and all we were doing was it, just chipping away at hit points upon hit points upon hit points, and it just it wasn't, it wasn't mind too numbing. long. It, it wasn't too long. It was too repetitive. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's simply what it was. It was like that. Now I'm going to hit the boss. That has, the the larger carca has one different move to the smaller carca, and has m even more hit points, and and that was the variety. And then you had hundreds of that repeatedly over an hour. It's going to seem longer than it actually is. So it's I'm not gonna, the time I'm gonna, And I'm going to jump around for it. I'm going to jump around for a second because what was it? A couple nights before, the four of us went and started doing some fractals. Um, mm -hmm. And we... Right, so some of the some of the some of the design behind like the 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 layouts and stuff are unbelievable. The underwater one, we all agreed. The underwater <laughs> one with the, with the with the glowing, uh, you know, luminous <laughs> plants. That thing is, is like, creepy. It's so creepy, and we're all like freaked out. Like so, from from that kind of a design perspective, it was amazing. But every mm -hmm. time we got to and the then, end, the end finale part, jellyfish boss guy, jellyfish. We were, we were just like talking about like, hey, what's how's the weather? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, okay, blah blah blah. And it was like, oh, is this done yet? Oh, it's not done yet. There was nothing to it. Then when we got to the lava guy, right? Same thing. Walk the guy around the circle. How many times did we have to walk that guy around the circle? Like it was, it was yeah. like eight times too many for nothing else the to happen. The jellyfish was the worst because the jellyfish does absolutely no damage to you whatsoever. You right. regen the damage it's doing to you as it's doing it to you. It, it does yeah. so little damage. Even when it, it has the mechanic where it's, oh, I'm, I'm being eaten by it. Oh, this is, oh, it's doing nothing to me. Okay. Yeah. I'll go back outside and stop throwing my spear at it again. For, and we were really weird. We were talking about <laughs> stuff and like, oh, oh, where's his health bar down to? Oh, okay. Keep it so yeah, we were, um, none of us were paying attention to the event. Right. None of us were paying attention to the boss, to. which is kind of yeah. lame. That that other guy though the the other guy with the where you're pouring the the molten uh, lava on them to keep him superheated or super molten or whatever that is actually an interesting mechanic but you're right once we learned it and got the rhythm it felt like you know going a pass three or four times would you know we, we had it down we shouldn't have to do it twelve fifteen times it, yeah. it had to have a different phase in between it needed a second phase to break that up so if you hit it if you did a full circle then it's gone into a different phase 
and perhaps it starts exploding in ice shards or something because it's got super heated and super cold. So you've got to go and get behind things or, or grab some shields or do something else. And when that's over, then go back and do one more time. Yeah. And, and that's good, like, encounter uh, design because then you have a variety and it doesn't get overly monotonous. You needed different phasing in it. And, and, and Gary, when you talked about uh, worry about if they're, they're worried about their design due to not having roles in it, the problem is, is that the need to give roles to you, the Colossus one, when, yeah. when you've got to, you know, smash the, the, the seals, the seals is great. Yeah. It because, is. because you have a role for everybody throughout mm-hmm. that. Somebody needs to hold that to be taking care of the hammer and they need to trade off. You need to take care of the other mobs. You need to focus on the, the mob that you want to kill the, the hammer with quick. And you yeah. have to work together and work in different ways to mm-hmm. help each other. So you've each got a role. The other stuff, you haven't. You're all doing the same thing. You just happen to be in the same room while you're doing it. You don't need to interact with each other to do this. And that's, it's not that you haven't got class roles like tank, yeah. healer, and DPS. You need to have something to do individually at different points to make sure you're not just all doing the same thing and you just happen to be in the same room sharing a chat bar. And at times, it feels like that. Right. And yeah. that's where the design of their encounters There's, I'm going to ask this. Uh, I'm watching chat room, and I, and I don't know this. I'm watching chat room while we're doing this. Do, do the fractals, because this could be just, um, hopefully somebody else here is, uh, we, got to, we got to level two, I only have to level two fractals, but um, do the fractals get more and more increasingly difficult, and do mechanics get added? I know they get more difficult, but do actual new mechanics get added to the fractals? Um, some mechanics get added. The one that's most controversial would be Agony, um, because that's only countered by gear. But I don't think that's really where we're going with this. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, so, no so, we're so, not going there. We're not going there. I'm going, I'm going more with, like, are the, are the, the bosses interacting and doing different things that we have to sort of learn their moves, figure out their tells, and have call-outs and, like, move people around and kind of interact as a group socially yeah. during the encounter. Yes. Yeah, so to, to, to be fair, yeah, we were doing difficulty level one the other night, so that's what we're describing here with our experience with it. So adding new mechanics as it gets difficult is 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 a great thing, absolutely. But but the, what I'm saying, the thing is, is you shouldn't have to repeatedly do a dungeon to eventually get to the point where it becomes interesting. Yep. That that's not good design. So maybe the level one so, just needs to be touched up a little bit because we were all kind of on the same page. It was the, all four of us were just like, all right, like you said with the guy with the lava. Once we figured out the rhythm. The most anybody said about the encounter was, go. It was just, go. Yeah. Stop go. running go. backwards. Wait, Richie, you have aggro. Get down here. Yeah. Jump. <laughs> All right, back to Karka. Let's get, we, we jumped off and went on fractals for a minute, but let's go back to Karka. So, final event, chasing to the top, chasing to the bottom, wear down the hit points, watch out for the dodge, get some shiny loot. They, they gave out some good loot. Uh, yeah. I think everyone was pretty happy about the loot. Well, Except for the people who weren't there. Yeah. Yes. They were pissed. Yeah. I, I, I have to tell you, I opened that chest and I stared at my screen like this. I, I was, I, I made a video last week, kind of like guessing, like what kind of things. I would, I was, I was convinced we would get a cosmetic token to kind of prove that we were part of this event. You know, a hat or something like that. Say, mm-hmm. hey, look, I, I did the event, and actually give out like multiple exotics a 20 slot bag multiple rares and including some people got lucky enough to get legendary precursors i was like wow i immediately you know went onto the forums i'm like this this is gonna this is gonna people are gonna flip out when they see this and they did and they did i I, I don't want to say that i'm slightly envious but someone in triple b got dusk yep someone in my guild got zap yeah so yeah, great. somehow I became the person on Twitter that everyone was like, oh, my guildy got this. Aren't you jealous? And I was like, well, I wasn't until I read this. Um, but uh, And some people were like really legitimately upset that so many people were getting um, precursors. But the thing is that just before the, with the patch that brought in Lost Shores, uh, precursor rates were increased slightly, exotic rates were increased, and rare rates were increased. So you already have a better chance of getting cool stuff out of a chest. And it's not really all that different than if you had had, you know, hundreds and thousands of players going to do one of the temples in Ore. Like, if you have that many people opening a chest at one time, you're going to have a lot more people getting cool stuff out of it. Um, this was aided by the fact that you could only get rares and exotics out of it. Um, but 
I, I, I don't understand people being upset that somebody else did well off an RNG. That just makes no sense to me. I think what this does though, right, is, is what, what it did was they, they, I'm sure they've really thought about this. And the reason they probably went with such awesome items was word got around really fast. Yes, and it you did. will, and you will remember the next time there's an event and you're going <laughs> like, to think oh, now I you're going to be at the finale. Exactly. You're going to expect the same thing and they're going to get a lot more people to show up to the next event. I mean, they have to make it worthwhile. If they're going to do these one-off things, they're going to get you in. There's got to be some big, big, big carrot because that's, that's what they're looking for. That's, that's almost the draw right now to keep you coming back in. Um, so now what, what do they, what do they do with the Island now for the interim? Like now it's, it's just sitting there. Yeah. So the Island is going to, um, get, kind of the events that we had to set lit are kind of cycling out, so we're not going to be going through and chopping down trees anymore. Um, we're going to be doing other things there. And so it's just a kind of new permanent 80 map with one uh, rich orichalcum node, which is amazing, and I've gone yeah. to great lengths to find it every day if I can. Um, something I'm fairly puzzled about is that the Karka are virtually unchanged from how we saw them in the weekend. So the whole thing was, you know, this event changes the face of Tyria, which it did. Like, there's an island there that wasn't there before. But we went through this two and a half, three hour event to kill this ancient Karka that was like the pinnacle of the menace of the Karka. And nothing has changed. Like, the Karka are still there. All the bosses have the same mechanics. There are still veterans everywhere you look. And I'm really confused. They have this system in place that lets them change the world on a grand scale and lets them have this kind of dynamic effect. And so that would, event was completely isolated. It has no almost, effect on anything. So you would assume that like you you know, the, the, they might be re, you know, NPCs at least, even if there's nothing else, maybe they're rebuilding on the on there or they're cleaning up or they're just doing something in the time period. To, to, to get the next phase of the island or get the more content on the island. But for, yeah, for just to be re-inhabited by more Karka seems absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, and, and like, um, so the entire weekend long, we were making um, Starship Troopers analogies because we can. Um, and so, like, the ancient Karka was the brain bug. And we understand that, like, if you take one brain bug down, you're not going to kill all the bugs. You need to kill all the brain bugs. But the fact that nothing changed was just very, very interesting. Yeah, well, the issue being that it wasn't. Oh, we, we don't have a lighthouse. It's, it's a beautiful looking island. Yeah, other than the lighthouse, did <laughs> you fix it? It's a, it's a beautiful looking <laughs> island, uh, and I, I did a few of the dynamic events, found a few, and ran around. But essentially, what I did was I went around for two hours, killing Karka repeatedly to try and find things to do other than killing Karka repeatedly. And when I came across the lizards on the beach, it was like, oh, 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 it's so, they're red. Oh, oh this is, a, this is fantastic. Are Karka the new Murloc? Are we just all going to hate the Karka? <laughs> like, I hate those things. Let's get out of here. Well, I kind I agree. I totally agree with everything Elizabeth said about, you know, th nothing changing. I do think that they probably left some, some Karka in there because of the monthly achievement, you know, people. Oh, no, absolutely. So there, there's, but yeah, they, they, they should have changed something in, in, in some way, shape or form there. I, I actually am a little disappointed that there's, there's currently no uh, map completion achievement for the zone. I, I, like think what, I think what that is, is people who already had a hundred would freak out. Um, because I know I heard a lot of people crying when the two yeah. points of interest got added to Lion's Arch and those were tracked. They're like, Oh, this is not acceptable. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle that when they're like adding continents or something for expansions. Well, I think they should have something like the wor the world completion doesn't change, but they have like a, a lost shore completion or something mm -hmm. like that for each something. each mini expansion or something. Have have something that you can work towards because I, I I enjoy getting map completion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, I mean, the good news is just today uh, they put up a blog post on their uh, on their on the Guild Wars Two blog there, and uh, studio design director Chris Whiteside uh, jumped up and, and talked about the Lost, Shore, Lost Shores event and kind of uh, talked a little bit beyond what they were going to do. Uh, so in the post, he recaps you know what the Lost Shores were about, and he said that they were aware that certain aspects could have been worked out better. Uh, they're taking all the feedback to heart, um, and that, that's that's great to hear. There wasn't you know. You, at least they know that there's some shortcomings with this event and uh, they'll work on it. But what was really interesting was what came closer towards the end of this blog article. It's up on Game Breaker if you want to read it as well. We posted it. Um, 
First thing up that caught my eye, man, they said they're going to be, they're, they're in the process, or they're going to be in the next coming months revamping all exist, existing dungeons, story, and explorable modes through for rebalance and overhauled encounters. So basically all the Q-Qing we, Q we just did for like the past hour. Yeah, they're going to fix it. They're just like, yeah, we're going to fix that. Like, we had to do a show. Ready. We needed like 40 minutes of something to talk about. I couldn't just like start the show with that because we had nothing to talk about. We're like, oh, they're fixing it. Shock Can we fix them. Cordicus Manor with a flamethrower? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be the best. Can we fix it by knocking the manor down? Revamping it with a bulldozer. <laughs> that'd be great. What do you think? So, we so got... early on, though, so early on to make a statement, going to revamp every dungeon, all of their mm -hmm. dungeons already at this point, only a few months into. Uh, they also said they're going to be adding new dungeons to fractals as well. Great news, of course. I mean, what do you guys think? Any? What do you guys think? Should, should every dungeon does it need reworking? I don't know that they're going to say, okay, we said we're reworking every dungeon, therefore every encounter is going to be changed. I think they're going to be going through and looking at, with an eye to what have players particularly complained about, what seems to be working well. Like, I really don't think they need to change, say, the Get Hair and Balefire fight. I, I really like that encounter. Yeah. The ones leading up to it could use some tweaking. So I, I'm hoping they're not saying, oh, well, we're just going to like scrap everything, which they couldn't really do. Uh, no, no, I, I didn't. So I, 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 retuning is a good thing. Retuning some what, balance, what? maybe some rewards and stuff like that. But I do hope that they do push into the realm of variation with mechanics. I do hope that mm -hmm. that, I hope this isn't just a, a balance and a rewards kind of retooling. Right. That's why I like the Colossus event in Fractal so much because it's memorable for doing it, and also it visually pays off. I mean, the whole Dr. Manhattan thing and walking off at the end when you've completed <laughs> it, it looks fantastic. But the, there's not many other bosses in dungeons that, that are memorable, not because of how they look, but how enjoyable the actual mechanics and the fight is. Um, yeah. And like, they kind of all pace together for me, it kind of blur a bit. It's it, because they're not. They're not that gripping as individual encounters, uh, and and that's that's kind of what you need, especially when you don't have raiding. You need your dungeons to be really gripping on that level, and I, I, they need to work on that. And I think I think some of the work they're putting fractals is really approaching some of that, and they've obviously learned, and they're looking to go back and you know improve what's there. And that's that's brilliant. That's certainly what they should do. Uh, so next up, he said that uh, they're also going to be build, rebuilding, uh, you know, South Sun Cove, the whole zone. I don't know if we have any idea of what they're going to be rebuilding there, but hopefully the car will be gone at that point. Um, hopefully that's or soon. at least diminished. <laughs> yeah. Really. Something I noticed um, they didn't put in um, for going forward is they did not say anything about uh, one-time events in the next couple months, which <laughs> they could just be holding that back. But I'm assuming, I'm hoping that they kind of wait until they get some stuff sorted out. Um, because this really poisoned the well a bit for them and their fan base. Um, yeah. So I noticed they weren't like, hey, we're coming out, you know, one time event in December, two in January, one time event. In that that wasn't. You don't think we're you don't think we're gonna see one for Christmas though? You don't think we're gonna see one? I think that we'll have like one day events because I mean that's how the Mad King was and that's how um, historically Christmas events have been in Winter's Day in Interior. Um, but I don't think we'll have necessarily see it. everyone should be here at this one time unless it's for like a cutscene. Yeah. I don't think so they're gonna be if like they'd done, if they'd have done the event over a week, then the the things that broke and the quest chains that got broken and couldn't really be fixed in time for before the end of the weekend wouldn't have been much of as much of a problem. You'd have had more time to breathe with it. And especially if you're doing and don't do a, 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 like invite a friend at the same time as you're doing that. Give them a feel of the game itself as it normally is and you get, you, you know, the players who know the, one, the areas the one, can take the, them around and show them the game. The one and, thing that's a two-sided two -sided to that because think of, think of the player who did get invited by a friend that weekend and went to that event. They were like, holy crap, this game is great. Look at this, this is crazy. Well, this is Zerg. I'm, le I'm level yeah. five and I have a legendary precursor. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> you guys got, but I'm saying you got, you got lag on that, on that first event. I got, I got zero lag or issues uh, for the, for the, for the, for the second and third part when I did it all on Sunday. I didn't have any issues whatsoever, tech, yeah. technical aside. I could just imagine, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a way that they actually want to put them on those days because they want those players to see these like one-off events that like are just super awesome with like hundreds of people in an area going crazy. And, and, and that's, like, this, that's this is great. what goes and on? That's great. 
that's it's great as long as as long as they have tested them to the point that they know they're going to work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, throw it's... extra people at something. That you no, you're right. If it doesn't work, it's a bad experience. Yeah. And then, like, they legit had players on their official forum saying, "Hey, new people, don't judge Guild Wars Two by this weekend. <laughs> Please yeah. don't. Like, it is yeah. such a better game than this is showcasing. So, like, okay. yeah, it's awesome if if they come in and they see it working." It's less awesome if they come in and they don't actually see the enemy and can't use any skills on them. All right, you're right. I'm yeah. sorry. I, uh, I I I felt like we beat up on Arena Net for the past like 45 minutes. I was trying to get their back. I was trying to be like, I'm not oh, awesome. super awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Yes. To, to be but sincerely no. fair, I mean, think about okay, if we if they can if they can hammer this stuff out and they do something like this in the future, I mean, man, what an amazing weekend that would be. Exactly. If there was technical yeah. issues aside, to take away the bugs and everything, like, whoa, okay, suddenly I just had an amazing experience over the course of a weekend that I'm going to talk, like, forever about. So yeah. I, I, think we'll they're, the I, Mad- I think they're on the right track. They just really they have a lot of work to do. Well, Absolutely. look at the Mad King event. I mean, that was just a little bit ago, and that was fantastic. Yeah. You know, yeah. That was really well put together. Lots of different things to do, a lot of variety. And it just, the whole thing worked really well. Yep. This, we, got, we can't forget, this is a misstep, definitely. But it's not like this is the latest in a huge series of... Yeah, like, absolutely. No, yeah, yeah. No. It's not you like the sign of it. Arena Nets impending doom. Yeah. No, you have, to, you have to almost expect these with these like one-off, the, you know, three-day events that they're doing that almost not many other MMOs really do this stuff at all. Mm-hmm. So exactly. it's like we kind of got to expect some missteps here and there. And, so. and, think yeah. of the, and, I, and I know this sounds like we are trying to say, oh, we, we don't want to be too nasty, but Think of the amount of work and commitment that's gone in to making that event for just three days. Yeah, yeah. I think they're crazy to be honest. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what I've been saying for three that, days. That, I've been like uh, stretch it out a bit. Well, I agree. <laughs> I've been saying that like the other other games have tried these like in world events and they've all stopped doing them over time because they just like they're too expensive to make for 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 um, you know a two or three day period. It's like I, I yeah. think they are kind of crazy for doing this stuff. I mean they're fun. But, yeah, and Gary, Gary, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Like, it almost seems like if they came out with the patch and they said, "Here's a new patch. It's got a new PvP map, a new level 80 zone, and a new dungeon," and wipe their hands, everyone would be like, "Wow, oh, that's so would, much content!" We would have been like, "That's <laughs> great. This is a great patch. Let's do it." Yeah, totally. Yeah, so, and so they, you know, so by biting off a little bit more, they can chew here, trying to be ambitious and try to separate themselves. It, it kind of was a little bit of a misstep, but if they get it right, like I said earlier, it's it's gonna be it'll awesome. be amazing. And and yeah, it will separate think- it will separate them from the pack if they get it right. Yep. yep. And I think it indicates that that's what they're trying to do. That they mm-hmm. wouldn't be putting this much in if they didn't see doing this on a regular basis as an important part of their retention and, and getting players coming back on a regular basis. So it's obvious that this is something they plan to do regularly. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't put that much effort into making this work on a short span unless you're going to do it repeatedly in different ways. Yep. Uh, he wraps up the post basically saying they're going to be adding content everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Um, they're working on guild progression features, evolving PvP into esports. We've heard that. Let's see some. Let's see it. Let's see it. People are dying for this and waiting for that. I think that we. I think the game needs that at this point. Where's the esports? Uh, they're also looking at WW content rewards. Um, anything in particular that you guys think need need particular attention that you didn't see listed? Um. They talk about uh, guild progression, mm-hmm. and this is my this is my big thing. And I talked about this with you, Gary, um, last week. Um, that one of the big stickiness elements uh, of retaining um, a large number of people in an MMO is the social aspect of it, and I'm still concerned about the necessity of guilds in PVE. Um, dun- for dungeons, the the, the it's obviously going to start stepping in that direction. I think they're going to start improving the dungeons, making them more interesting and so on. And that's really important, and I, I really want to see more of that, making those encounters more interesting, uh, making them something that each person has a role, and the class doesn't matter, you just have something to do differently for each person at a different time in the event. But I'm still like to see something that needs organization for a large number of people, which will make a guild necessary. And 25-man raids? Something. Something, yeah. something where those big events need some kind of real organization and need people to stick together because g- guilds as a pure social group are great, but most, people's, most people who have made friends in MMOs made them because of coming together to do a specific thing that they needed to mm-hmm. do together and then became friends. They weren't all already friends and then went off to do stuff. And that's kind of how Guild Wars 2 takes it. Is there's a large group of people who are just friends and they go and have adventures around the place and explore. 
I think you need something to keep those those social those communities together. And right now, I'm not sure if that's that. I mean, what do you th what do you what are you thinking about them doing? Do you think they should take dungeons and then turn them into like ten and twenty five man dungeons and make them even harder with more mechanics and stuff like that, where you just you're forced to get a larger group? I mean, that would work if there's also a leaderboard or something, say, where there's some sort of progression there and people are fighting for it. But then it's like, but then you get into the whole thing, and then then does loot sort of come into it, or is it just for bragging rights? Like again, we're we're now going down the road it of doesn't... is that is that sense of you know the the guild progression and stuff is it not there because there isn't gear progression or it's not here yet it's not there well <laughs> it's it's i mean there's gear progression <laughs> on of a kind anyway there is already gear progression in the game it's just whether you can have that grind where the only reason you're doing it is for gear and that's not necessary to have you don't have to have large organizable like large large events that need good organization for the people around it you don't have to have that and a very strict vertical gear progression system. You don't have to have both. It's just previously that's all there's been. But like the large events, like if you're doing um, one of the large dragon events uh, in the ways, it's you know basically three mechanics and a lot of people running around, and you each individually do what you need to do while other people are, happen to be around you. Yeah. It doesn't require very much interaction between each of you other than reviving. Reviving is the team mechanic in Guild Wars 2. Well, now Too you're often. now now you're even getting into the uh, the whole Holy Trinity aspect, and now you're 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 kind of tying into that, and now you're sort of insinuating that you're missing roles. No, I'm Girl. missing. I'm not missing roles necessarily because of the the profession. I'm missing roles as in as in that Colossus. You each have a role at different points mm -hmm. that makes it important what you're doing, but it has nothing to do with your class and what what if you're a tank or DPS. It's just it gives you something to do, a task to do, that you need to be mindful of and help each other in doing. And at each point, that, that person, the focus, is a different one. There's too many events where the focus is nobody. You're yeah. all just doing the same thing around in a, in a, you know. That's why it gets called dessert. It's because everybody's doing the same thing and there's no focus point. Because you're not doing different things, you're all just doing the same thing. And that's, that's why it's an issue. Anyone else? Anything else uh, missing from the list? Do you guys want to? Do you, you like? This, do you think this kind of needs to be looked at? They didn't mention guesting. <laughs> no, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Need that someday. so bad. Someday, yeah. someday, someday. Fingers crossed. We, we, All right, we're we gonna talk like, about. We were... it. What's that? So sorry, we're like going. Maybe they'll have it on Monday. Guesting, like people in the desert looking for water. It's getting that <laughs> Oh, when will guesting come? Uh, someday, soon, someday soon. All right, we're gonna talk about a lot of class changes. We got a lot of show left. Jesus, we gotta get going. Uh, first, I want to tell you really quickly about Rift. Yes, Storm Legion, the expansion from Rift is out and available right now. If you guys have not checked out Storm Legion, go over to StormLegion.com. Tons of info there. Check it out. They got tons of new content. So much uh, dungeons, raids, chronicles, PvP. Three faction PvP put into the game now. Ten more levels. Four new souls in the game. I love the soul system in Rift. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it, but the three the three tier system is just mind boggling. Just how many different concepts and like ways that you can play your character in Rift is crazy. So uh, the three tier tree system is just awesome. Um, they got seven new dungeons, three new raids, a chronicle. Uh, man, of course, something you've probably heard me go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about is how awesome dimensions are. The player housing in Rift is insanely cool. Uh, it you can build cool. whatever you, it is. It really is. You can build whatever Super you cool. want. It's like, it's like your own little playground and build whatever you want. Probably definitely my favorite new thing. The other thing, I think my two favorite things right now in Rift are definitely, I love dimensions and I love, love, love. They have this little like a, uh, I forget what they have like a new menu at the bottom, or I forget what it's called. It's not like abilities or something, but it's where they've they've kind of stacked in all of the things that you can do kind of quickly. Like if you don't have tons mm -hmm. and tons of time to play, it's got like a menu of you know instant adventure. So it's like if I jump in and I don't know none of my friends are on, I click instant adventure and it ports me to like where there's a bunch of people doing something. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And then it's like chronicles. I could run like all the dungeons with like two two people. Like that's all I need is like one other person to run. It's like all those like really quick ways to get into content 
I think it's brilliant. It's like basically I log in and I click that menu and I go and do something really fast. So go check it out. Go over to stormlegion.com and don't forget we still we still have copies of Storm Legion to give away. Actually, go to gamebreaker.tv slash giveaway. And uh, we've still got some copies left. Uh, we're going to be giving out probably uh, one or two this week and then uh, last week. So all throughout the month of November, go over to gamebreaker.tv slash giveaway. All right. So next up, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the class changes uh, brought up. So let's go through the classes um, that we actually at least have some experience with. Scott, uh, are you going to berserk any of the guardian changes this time around? Yeah, yeah. No, I've had enough. I'm sick of them doing things that are actually not bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, the staff got a little bit of love. Um, ooh, that sounds wrong. Just note that for the episode of the... Increasing it's... speed. Sorry. Just, uh, just, uh, um, just note, note that that's the title of the show. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> um, yeah, staff got a little bit more viability. Um, they split um, some of the PvP up and, and nerfed a little bit here and there, but nothing too bad. Nothing that's going to make me start swearing, drinking heavily, or anything like that. Uh, Rangers, Rangers saw some uh, some some stuff on the Ranger forums. People are kind of going crazy. Um, not nearly. It's got some changes, but not nearly as many as I guess they would like. Right? What's going on with Rangers? Yeah. A lot, a lot of Q queuing right now. Yeah, there's supposed to be a ranger revamp that they've they kind of talked about a little bit, and so rangers are are definitely waiting for that. And and the changes to rangers this time didn't quite uh, soothe the savage beast. They actually there was mm -hmm. a, like some nerf. Sorry, <laughs> there were some nerfs to like the traps and stuff like that even in there. And so so rangers rangers are waiting for this big overhaul, and they didn't get it. So it and they're them. waiting so patiently, like gamers do. Oh, yes, they're so patient. <laughs> uh, John Peter stepped on the forums to say this. He said, I do believe uh, Ranger is the profession in most need of improvement after this patch, and we will continue to make those improvements. Uh, if we could fix everything at one time, we would. But the reality is there are a limited number of hours to make changes. So good news. for uh, At least you guys know that there are issues. They know there are issues. They're coming. Uh, so have patience, as good gamers on the Internet are. Um, so John didn't stop there. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate nope. that he, he, <laughs> of let, course he didn't, he <laughs> let this line slip through. Um, he said, uh, there are over 500 skills in this game, 480 traits and two designers working on this <laughs> derp. Uh, he didn't say derp. Even then, uh, often we, we are, we are <laughs> bottlenecked by other issues. Uh, so immediately, the immediately designers. the forms and Reddit completely blew up with people thinking that there are two two people, two people in the entire staff I, yeah. That's That's it. they're locked in a closet <laughs> and, and they're only allowed light like two hours a day uh, and they, they let them out to, to go to the bathroom and then they come back and say have you fixed everything yet and they say no and they lock them back in the closet <laughs> well, <laughs> it, was, nutrient -rich sludge. it was a blunder of a quote I mean it was obviously a blunder of a quote Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, he knew so what he, he was talking about. He knew. He, just, it just when, came across yeah. badly. So Jonathan Sharp jumps uh, on and makes a post, and uh, he, he actually listed the people who are uh, present in balance meetings. So there's eight of them. Yeah, John Peters. I'm not going to go through them all, but there's eight people there. Here, uh, You want to read them? Read them. So there's eight oh. different sets of people. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple, couple of those are individual yeah. people, and a couple of those are groups of people. Yeah, you got game designers, and QA, you got you know, lead designer, you got a bunch of people on. He's worth about five people when it comes to balance, so it's a pretty hefty meeting. Um, yeah. so check out that sure. post at, at at length on the forums, guys, if you're interested or if you're still concerned about this all, because he he was very transparent in this post, and I was I was. I don't know. I, I really like the reaction to it. It was, you know, it was like, yes, we, you know, it could be misconstrued and we apologize, but here's the transparency. And I thought they did a great job, like covering that up. Mm -hmm. uh, let's up here. Did anybody play Thief? They got, they got hit pretty hard with the nerf bat, right? They did. Yeah. Again. going to set mine on the back burner for a short while. Play some yeah. other class. Um, the interesting thing here is uh, they've made some more changes that impact only PvP. Divide is growing. Um, yeah, so... What do you guys think of this? We, we talked about this a few weeks ago. What do you think, Liz? It's 
something that essentially at one point has to be done because AIs operate so differently than player characters, so you have to understand that people are going to need different things in PvP versus PvE. I'm not thrilled to see it happening so quickly, um, but it, I feel like, especially given Guild Wars 1, it was fairly inevitable. So we'll just have to, I mean, at least at this point, like, it's, oh, there's, you know, a 10% damage difference. In Guild Wars 1, the difference could be, like, oh, Signet of Spirits in one, um, in PvE, it, you know, someone's three spirits and it's instantly rechargeable and this and that, the other thing. And the other thing, it, like, adds to your damage output. So, like, there were completely different skills that happened to share a skill slot. And so I'm hoping that we don't go to that extent this time around. I have, a, I have a question with this, because I actually just honestly don't know the answer. When they're changing something like Cluster Shot, where it does less damage in PvP, are, is the tooltip different? Does it say it? Does, is the icon different? Is there any interface thing? Because if, if there's not, I, I think we, we need to start seeing that. There needs to be some way to, to, to tell what the difference is between the two. Um, and we did talk about this a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, I like this method better than the alternative, you know, where, where you... Uh, try to keep it the same, right? And you try to balance it between the mm -hmm. two and you're nerfing PvE, you know, to you know, on the you know, to make PvP balanced and all that kind of stuff cuz that that's a whole different set of challenges that, you know, I've yeah. been through I've been through a lot with World of Warcraft and other games. So, I kind of prefer them to just say, you know what, that's that's going to be different in PvP, but it, it, as Elizabeth said, it does get messy and if they change the mechanic completely, it gets confusing. So, you have you have to keep a really close eye on that. Um, as a design team, it, it's, it's going to be so complicated to keep clear line through the design elements as, the, as the keeping that together. But it, it does take out all of the. Wait a minute, you're wrecking my you're wrecking my PVE experience for rate for PVP people. Uh, you know that that's always going on in other games when, yep. when they're trying to balance everything on one element rather than both. So it makes sense to do that way, but it seems that they tried initially to not have to. But the, once the precedent set, it, it's going to keep on going. All right. Next up, Robert Hounds talks about the changes to uh, dungeon loot uh, that were implemented in this patch. He says uh, we selected three specific boss uh, sub bosses throughout each dungeon chain and developed special drops for them that are influenced by your character's magic find. Uh, he says we also gave those three sub-bosses a guaranteed item called a Bag of Wondrous Goods, which will give the players a consumable karma item worth 400 karma and a consumable monetary item worth up to four silver. Uh, in Explorable Dungeons, the bag will also reward three tokens specific to the dungeon. Um, they've also balanced the Explorable uh, chains better to reward you more equally no matter uh, which chain you're going to choose now. So... Liz, you're, you're doing a little dance over there. So were, were these changes really needed? Um, to a certain extent, because, I mean, so you have the idea that you have kind of separate but equal branches through different dungeons, but you've got people who, like, will not touch, you know, uh, Citadel Flame Path 3 with a 10-foot pole. They just, if you suggest that you'd like it, you're never going to play with those people again. Um, so, and I, I'm not sure if it's actually COF that people dislike. Anyway, so the whole point is, like, you have people who are like, we're only doing Path 1 ever, we're not ever considering anything else because it's suboptimal. Which kind of sucked. Um, so rebalancing so that you have at least a higher percentage of people who'd be like, oh no, we can do whichever, it's all cool, would be really, really nice. Um, so you think you're going in the right direction with this? I tend to think so. Um, really quick on the Bag of Wondrous Goods thing, um, there have been a couple other loot bags added to the game. There's a bag of gold and a bag of gems, and they are bags of lies, as we they're found out in the dungeon. They're so, filthy, so, filthy lies. Gems. I'm like, oh, they're giving out gems. This is really cool, like, neat fractals reward. Bags and it's, of you know, <laughs> it, it's a ruby orb, and I was like, that's not what gem means in this world, and I feel lied to. Oh, <laughs> man. That's a total bag of down. Bag of gold has silver in it. Yeah. <laughs> and only two. <laughs> Everybody agree that this is a good direction though for yeah, good balance? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I love and I love the, the the reward revamp as well. You know, you, at times you would run through a dungeon and you you know, you just you kind of just get a handful of blues and greens that you don't need at all and 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 this is it's great to have the bag of wondrous goods and it's certainly better than the bag of uh <laughs> the soggy bag we got from the investigation. <laughs> Bag of mysterious origin. Bag yes. of soggy. So, 
All right, let's do some viewer questions really quick. I'm going to tell you about a great deal we got going on with Audible. I want you to check out Audible. Got a free book, 30-day trial. Just got to go over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. That's all you got to do. Go to the URL, audible.com slash gamebreaker. Try out Audible free for 30 days. Get a free audio book today. You download the app. You put it on your iPhone or your Android or whatever you got there, and you, uh, you listen to books because that's what we do in 2012 going into 13. We don't read them. We listen to them. That's all I do. A uh, huge fan of Audible. I love it. I know when you try it, you're going to love it as well. Check it out. Go over to audible.com slash gamebreaker today. Uh, let's do some view up questions. First up, uh, let's see. This one is from Justin Shaver. Justin Shaver says, how do you feel about the uh, difficulty of obtaining Ascended infused gear now that we have recipes for them? Uh, do you think that 250 to 300 ecto per piece is extremely excessive for that to be the new tier? Doesn't it seem like the kind of grind we were promised would not be present? 300 ecto is only about an average of 100 rare or exotic items. You know, <laughs> so it seems pretty equitable. Right? Right. Um, Guys? <laughs> It's, it's, it's a little rough. Yeah. Keep, keep, keep in your face straight when you're saying that's really tough. <laughs> um, the grind was in as soon as you took the, the promise early as we were going along. The, the reason that, that, that sort of grind isn't in our game. Apparently that reader was very misinformed because people are saying it's about 50, which is much more reasonable. Well, that's, that's, that is, that's a lot much better. But there is, there is All the grind. concerns are gone. The grind, the, there is a grind in the game in different areas, in different ways. It's just not quite, it's not the same sort of grind that you'd expect to get with that sort of uh, dungeon raid progression that you get in this game. But it's yeah. Game. Yeah, we talked about that before. There's absolutely grinds in this game that you can go for. I mean, you go for a legendary, that's pretty grindy. You know, you have to farm karma for a long, mm -hmm. long time, farm a lot of different things. But it, 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 it the, the key is, you know, are these optional grinds, and I, I see the point here. It's getting a little bit n nervous here. If, if they're if the ascended items are are needed to actually progress in the fractals, you know, then uh, then it's kind of becoming like if you want to do fractals, then this is kind of a mandatory grind. So I I, I don't know if uh, you know. I'm glad it's only fifty and, and not the two hundred. Um, it, it, well, it's a yeah. sliding scale. It's a sliding yeah. scale. That's a sliding, yeah. scale. sliding scale. Okay. If you want to infuse, um, the, the so if you want the there, stuff, it's good board. for. Yeah. If you want to infuse, it's a, well, it's another well, two. What is interesting? What is interesting about this whole thing is that we were we were talking last week about okay the ascended items and that was the hot topic and it's it's interesting how those don't even come into effect for so long into you know the fragment like they don't even start worrying about agony until after like the tenth level right and uh, you know requiring lots of the ascended gear doesn't doesn't take place after that and uh, so it's interesting that they, this this whole debate. Um, I don't know. I ex I expected it to, to the ascended items to be kind of like everywhere already, and it's it's just you know it's just not they're not easy to obtain at all, which I think is uh, interesting. The only concern I've seen so far beyond what we talked about last week was that I thought initially that the infusion would, it would just have like a reduction in agony on it, like that'd be a choice of and it's not. There's actually multiple stats and agony that you can have infused, which which is quite bolster to the power of the item beyond what I thought it was going to be actually. So um, there, there definitely is a tier above there with ascending. I, mean, you really, I imagine you'd feel it, especially when they're starting to use more items. Plus back slots. Hmm. I really, 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 really want the quiver for both my um, warrior and my ranger. They both need it. It's got to be a thing that I have two of. All right, next up, this one from Josh Hagood says, uh, should structured PvP offer experience or other non-SPVP rewards? What do you think, Liz? I would... I, I don't care necessarily about non-SPVP rewards, but I would like to get actual experience um, because, like, I really like playing structured PvP. But I also know that, like, I really want all eight of my characters to hit level 80. And that's not happening if I'm doing multiple hours a day of SPVP. Um, so it's a difficult balance, and um, I think they have good reason to keep it separate, at least at the beginning, and even though I would like to see some sort of workaround where you get a little bit of XP, maybe. Um, let, the let whole ask, point... Sorry. The let whole me point, ask you the question. 
What what is the good reason to keep? Because um, previously, and we've talked about this, is right now everything they do, you get rewarded with something that applies to what you're doing. So you're playing PVE, you're getting things that you use in PVE. You're get you're playing PVP, you're um, getting rewarded with PVP specific items that make you look shiny. You're playing World versus World, you're getting rewarded with blueprints and this and little medals of honor in PVE stuff. And leveling. Um, well, and well, yeah, but that's because. World versus world screws everything over. Um, <laughs> so ignoring that thing that doesn't fit precisely with my worldview and argument, um, <laughs> you're getting rewarded with what you're doing. Um, and so I can understand why they're like, well, you're not actually like, because since it's all level, you don't actually need to level. And it's like, yeah, but then I'm never going to play. Um, so it's, it's, I don't know. I, I'd, like them to, I'd like them to be able to show off your the items and the skins that you get in PvP outside of the mists. I, I, I think that would be cool because there's people that unlock all these really awesome looking PvP skins, but you know, let them be able to show it off in Lion's Arch or something like that. Let them actually es- escape that little square area. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. That, that, that I think would, uh, would be cool for the PvP folk. Just, have, just have it, your town, just have your town, your, uh, you can choose to have your uh, town clothes be your PvP set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I barely hear you. Sorry, was, hold on. Was, uh, last up from Bear Powell. He uh, says, Would you like to see WW treated in a similar fashion to SPVP in regards to equipment so we can keep the Ascended debacle out of it? Rijay. Um, I don't see how they can do that. Like, because it uses your it uses your same gear, right? It uses your PVE gear, so uh, it's not like when you go to World versus. I, I guess I guess what they're maybe asking is, you go to World versus World and you have an automatic max set uh, level of gear. Um, but I, I don't know. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of it being like Liz said. It, it ruins arguments, but it also bridges that that gap between <laughs> PVP and PVE, right? You know, so you're in there and you're still progressing your character. You're still you know, you're still able to unlock your skills. You're still able to unlock your traits, and you're still able to improve your gear. So I kind of, I kind of like the aspect that you, when you're in there and you're working for your server, you're also progressing your character in a, a, a multitude of ways. So I, I, I would not want them to treat that, treat it that way. Scott, what do you think? I, uh, I think uh, essentially with structured PvP, that I'm fine with it, sticking with it as it is. To be honest, um, especially because it's, it's, it's a it's quite a sacrosanct place where people are really dedicated to PvP to go and play. And so, especially for players like that, they like to feel separated from the the rest of the game, kind of, when they're doing that. And they want to focus on... And so keeping the rewards focused on what they're doing there ma- makes sense. I don't think it would be the end of the world, though, if they added some XP return from it. I really don't. I don't think it's not... If you're just so focused on just structured PvP, does it really matter if you get XP anyway? Along along the way, I, I don't think it makes that much difference. But I can understand why they're doing it, but it, it, I just don't think it would break the game if they added a bit of ex, of, uh, of regular XP to go along while you you play. You agree, Liz? Sure. Yes. I'm not a game designer. <laughs> nah, you just play with nah. on, on on Wednesdays. Yeah, right before the show, I sneak in an hour and pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Uh, Elizabeth Claire, follow her on the Twitter at Elizabeth Claire. And of course, go over to Massively, Massively, Massively and read all her work over there. Always a pleasure, always a pleasure. With two thumbs up. Uh, Richie Procopio, follow him on the Twitter at Richie Procopio and come over to GameBreaker.tv and read all his Guild Wars 2 stuff right here on GameBreaker.tv. Two thumbs up. Happy Thanksgiving, uh, everybody. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> True, yes. Scott Hawks, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, you colonial bunch. Oh. Everybody. Scrooge. Never mind. <laughs> Follow Scott Hawks on Scrooge at Jaramore. Uh, Twitter, sure. Whatever. Humbug. Happy Thanksgiving, <laughs> everybody. We'll be back next Wednesday. We do the show live every Wednesday at 6 PST, so come on over for the live show. It's always a good time. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Eat turkey and fall asleep. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. <laughs>